Discourse with Jimmy Disu. We're talking politics. The opposition will do anything to remain in office. The economy. Things are really falling apart. Social well-being. Chewing gum is dirty and a filthy habit. Everything in between. I don't like to call it religion. I like to call it spirituality. It's the Discourse with Jimmy Disu every Sunday at 2 p.m. Brought to you by MTN. Ladies and gentlemen, live from the Classic FM studios in Lagos, it's The Discourse with Jimmy Disu, brought to you by MTN. Guy, now what for you? Where your MTN sim day? MTN sim? Ah, you pressure drop on one side. I don't call you since last week now. You don't miss many, many things, so. Business day, I say, I call you, your phone say, not available. I can't say me go arrange another hustle. Your first thing say not available. I can't say me I tell you say empty and they dash some people twenty times any amount where they recharge. Wait wait wait. Empty and dash. I said empty and they dash twenty times any amount where you take recharge. Now we say if you load hundred naira now two thousand naira be that straight. Oh, so you mean say if I load two hundred naira now four thousand naira be that? Sure. I don't jump by second. They slip sim. Yes, they run from empty now. Guy, they go find my empty and sim shop star. Yes, so if you never use your empty and sim for the past forty five days or more, time don't to come back and begin enjoy plenty, plenty a woof as MTN go dash you 20 times your first charge of every month. Oh, yo, everybody don't go reactivate your MTN sim. You still the wait if you know if you find your sim. Sharply go any MTN office to do sim swap and enjoy your own a woof. Terms and conditions they shall. My sister, all that glitters and shine shine you. That's why I see one fine bobo like that. Fresh boy, designer this, designer that. But my boy still a carry palasa for we no get internet, WhatsApp, or even Facebook. Eh? I mean, want to take relate now. <laughs> my people, make palasa for no fall your hand this year. Upgrade to smartphone. In fact, buy any smartphone. Or bring your smartphone come MTN. And then go summer you with 100% awoo data bam. On top of Every bundle where you buy for the next three months. So make you drop that palasa now. So you feel they enjoy fast, fast internet on the network with data boku and then be bamba for data coverage. This a woof now for new and old MTN customers. Hey, Steve, Steve, my guy. Taxi for my shop, oh. School get a CB as his hands non start. So when you go come my shop, make you for check out the correct, correct shoes I just do. Sure, for this age and time, you still ask make person call your shop. Ah, what you go do now? Say you get empty line. Just dial star one three one ash. Make you connect to WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook, or any social media app for MTN goodie bag. How that one go help me sell my market now? Oh yeah, download WhatsApp for your phone first. Then snap the new shoes where you want to show me. Put the picture for WhatsApp from your MTN line. They send them to me. I go choose the one where I like. Come even send the pictures to my friends for school. Make their self join by your market. Say hello, my God. Yes, so you fit open another shop on top social media with empty and goodie bag and still get double double. With just 25 naira daily or 50 naira weekly, you go get double data to browse Facebook, Instagram, even chat WhatsApp. No carry lasso. Enter empty and goodie bag now. Just dial star 131 star 3 hash. Make yourself come to get double. Double, double. <laughs> You're listening to the discourse with Jimmy Dusu, brought to you by MTN. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the discourse with Jimmy Dusu, brought to you as usual by MTN. Right, and of course, you know that uh, the station you are listening to. It's Classic FM 97.3. I assume you haven't even touched that dial for maybe almost six months. Just keep listening to Classic FM, okay? Right. Um, today, I, I, I have, we are going to do what I sometimes call a state of the nation. We are going to have a state of the nation discussion with my very, 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 very good friend, long-time colleague, Mr. Komiade Miloui, of my apologies, Prince Komiade Miloui. <laughs> Whichever which way, thank you. Of Ife, <laughs> of the <laughs> source. Good afternoon. Hi, Komi, how are you? Very well. Uh, I'm not feeling too good. Not the worst for I, I'm not. I'm not talking. Not yesterday. I'm not talking <laughs> physically. Oh, okay. I'm not. I'm not feeling too good. Too good, uh, you know, about the country. But before that, let me read out the uh, how you know people can interact with us here. Okay. Uh, the Twitter page is at Classic FM 973. Instagram, same thing, at Classic FM 973. 
Facebook page, facebook.com slash Classic FM 97.3. And then the Classic website is classic97.net. Now, listen carefully. There are two numbers. If you just want to make a call, it's 0700-1000-973. Let me repeat that again. 0700-1000-973. Now, if you want to make a call still, there's this number, 0909-217-2973. But if you want to send a WhatsApp message, you will use that same number. That is 0909-217-2973. And uh, please, if you do tweet, add at Jimmy D. so I can, you know, read it, well, follow it on my, on my device here. Right. State of the nation coming. Yes. Um, I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, uh, especially with what has happened in the last one or two weeks. I'm, I'm quite uncomfortable about the way politics is being played, about the way government is being run at all levels across the country. And I'm saying this is the 19th year, right? Yeah. 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 What is this what we have to show for the 19 years of democracy that we've had? Well, I think part of the problem is that um, we transited to civil rule 19 years ago. Are you using that word deliberately? Yeah. Okay. Because I think the, the <laughs> common rules were, sounded rather unkind when they described it as a semi-democracy. Hmm. And I don't think we really transited to a full democratic stage. If you look at the uh, go- towings and throwings in the last few weeks, one of the key things we find is the fact that that transition, which was very horrid, did not put together the framework to for real political parties on clear philosophical cleavages, let alone ideological lines, to emerge. By not having real political parties, in the traditional way in which political parties have been defined in the last 100, 150 years, that's why you have people jumping from one tendency to a faction of what is essentially a one-party state. Unfortunately, there's a price for this. If you do not have political parties that are based on a clear ideological or philosophical difference, it affects the policy itself. The APC, for example, has been in power three and a half years with late budgets, no coherent economic uh, policy and no social framework. It's because there has no clear ideological difference between them and the people they replaced. So the transition was defective, but it couldn't have been because these people just hurried back to the barracks. The parties that came out were hobbled, great, you know, very quickly coupled together uh, electoral vehicles. And we we'll continue to pay a price for it. But the good thing, actually, in the end, is that all these throwings and throwings might eventually lead to the formation of real political parties with clear-cut differences. Although, don't go about holding your breath. Yeah, because if, if you look at um, when it was said that the PDP was merging with some parties, yeah. I was surprised to see uh, the party formed by Ghana. Mm, yeah. I mean, that, that was your kindest... It was a kindest cut to the gentleman. Kind of, but because I don't know how Ghana will play. I mean, it doesn't really matter who is my but that idea of the NCP merging with the PDP, I find it bizarre. I don't yes. know whether the NCP is no is virtually repudiating Ghana himself. Because if it was the NCP, I can't even imagine the NCP merging with the APC. I can mm-hmm. imagine the NCP merging with say the PRP. Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. But how can the FCP match with the PDP? I mean, it just shows a complete... It's, it's, it's a joke. And, and here it you have a, joke, a senator of the Federal Republic. Hmm. He, 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 he moves to another party yeah. in the afternoon. And by the following morning, he's back where he came from. Yeah. Is that how these things are done? Well, I mean, like I said, that one is really like getting curiouser and curiouser. Like Alice was one to observe in Wonderland. Yeah, I'm but I mean, in the, in the particular case of the person you're talking about, I mean, that to me, I'm very sorry to say, he does hint to be polite. We're on a radio station, and some some problems with the person's uh, self-esteem because yeah, you I'm... cannot move from one formation to another in the space of 24 hours. And I'm back. back. 
unless you have a problem with and your then, self and then, esteem. And, and then joke about it to the president. And then make light the president, your son your is son, back. Yeah, you see that? Well, I think, well, honestly, to be fair, it just goes to show you that there's no difference. In, I'll give you a good example if you can give me half a minute. Yes. Of what I mean when, you know, say, for, to develop a country, you have to have proper political parties. And the fact is that the people, the players today have no inclination of why they are there. They are there because they are politicians in inverted commas because of the lack of economic opportunities. When I was 17 years old, I was in a secondary school in Brighton. And a friend and I invited me. I, a friend and I went to a summer camp of the National Organization of Labour Students. You know, it's a boot camp that is going on all over Europe today, conservative. And, uh, I managed to con the late Chief Fanny Kyle day or somebody. So I got myself and Martin went there. When we got there, we were both doing A levels. We were 17. We were both like the papa of the class. Because there were 14, 15 year olds in that boot camp. These people were being socialized to be prepared to take over power in 20, 25 years' time. Hmm. You get what I mean? You had people who were past chancellors of the exchequer, past ministers, addressing people about the budget process, housing policy. What I'm saying is that, have you ever seen a boot camp of the young APC or the young PDP? The, the, the fact is that in 19 years, right, we've not built anything. If, if you look at the ANC in South Africa, they actually have policy summits. Policy summits to discuss housing, policy summits to discuss uh, macroeconomic <laughs> policy. In 19 years, None of these people has done that kind of thing because look, you don't really have political parties. The I don't country, even think you have politicians either. No, you don't. You don't have politicians either. Look, this country does not have economic opportunities. The person who is into politics is there because you, know, you cannot borrow money at thirty percent interest rates to build a small business. You are always perennially there's no infrastructure. There's no. So when you say that you are a politician, you are just somebody who is looking for. A, an opportunity to survive. Train. Yeah, it's you know, it's not even just, just a gravy, gravy train. train, right? Look, so you, you cannot. You nature abhors a vacuum. This country yeah. has no social safety net. You cannot lose your job today, and uh, you can't lose your job at Classic FM and go to the Dole office in uh, Obalin there and register. <laughs> uh -huh. So look, there no look. The country does not have economy. It's like when you say that somebody arrives in his constituency. Mm and is met by a crowd of hundreds or thousands of people on a, on a Tuesday day. afternoon. Mm. What that shows is not that the guy has pulling power. What it shows is that there's an unproductive economy. Mm. Why aren't you and my brother here, why don't you go and meet Obama at Montalama, that's Obama or mm. Nelson Mandela at 2 o'clock on a Tuesday? It's because you have commitments. You are classic FM, or if you are not a classic FM, you, are, you get what I mean? Mm. It's an unproductive economy until you have a situation where you have a, a coherent economic policy which is based on the conquering of poverty and the creation of jobs, both of which are intertwined. That is, you know, it's like the thing that we were discussing yesterday at Dr. Ajayi's party with somebody. How can you say that you can break the cycle of poverty? By giving somebody a Kekemawa or an Okada. <laughs> yeah. Without being a cost accountant, there is no cost benefit analysis that you can do that anybody is going to exit poverty after seven years. Presumably, we mean that it's still an economic unit. Yes. After using Kekem, after driving Kekemawa or uh, Okada. It's not possible now. Because, look, just do a perfunctory cost benefit analysis. Even if there was no loan to be paid back. You get what I mean? Look at the kind of roads. Then the levies. He has the transport unions. He has a myriad of guys on the streets and stuff. The maintenance of that Kekema. Nobody. And the people who are giving you Kekema. Um, uh, was it the, what do you call it? The Okada. Okada. They know that this guy is not going to transit out of poverty after seven years. But because if useful. no, I mean the tasting of the pudding, right, is mm. in the eating. So you see, that's why you didn't give Toby Kekemawa. <laughs> mm. <laughs> that's why Toby went to university. You get what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, 
I mean, if this, if, <laughs> if this poverty alleviation model or poverty breaking out of was so good, right? There's no need for you to have sent Toby to university now. It's a waste of money. Why don't you just give her Keke Mawa and that kind of... Get they, what these people are doing, which is yeah. really disgraceful and destructive yeah. in the long run, is that you are creating a culture of dependency. And it's deliberate. It's deliberate. Look, come, look, look, uh, Jimmy, look, you don't have to have a PhD in <laughs> economics to deliberate. know that none of this poverty, whatever they call it, is going to take anybody. It's deliberate. You are creating a culture of dependency so that election cycle after election cycle, there will always be a mass of people to give two, three thousand naira to, to vote. To vote. Uh, so you think that a Turkey now will vote for an early Christmas? You will exit people from poverty. They're not going to. First of all, they're not going to collect three thousand or five thousand to vote. Secondly, they might be contesting against your interest because they've existed po uh, yeah, exited exit poverty. poverty. They are people, economic units in their own right. It's an insult for them to take your even your fifteen thousand. Nobody can buy voters with fifteen thousand. That's a humongous amount of money. So it's best so, to keep your overheads low. So what you are doing mm. is that you are creating a culture of dependency and dependency because that's the only model that comes out of what we've been operating. I mean, if you the first time that a lot of people fact check, you know, everybody has data on their phone. The one I mm. wrote that the government of Lula da Silva took out 40 million people out of poverty in eight years. When you first come across it, until you, you use your Google or yeah. something like that, you know, yeah. to do it, 40 million people out of poverty in eight years it seems like fantasy. It's just not believable until yeah. you bring out your phone and Google. Do the calculations. Have, yeah. But this thing is not rocket science. You get what I mean? It's if you want to do it, you can do it. But if your model is... Tell our the, listeners how he did it. I mean, well, I mean for example, the that asking these that. people came in and they saw the problems that the country had. Okay. They created an economy based on the creation of jobs, a fiscal policy. For example, the one million housing units a year policy, in which in eight years, they ended up building about 10.3 million. Hmm. That program in itself took out over five, six million people out of poverty because the kind of guy that you're giving some useless Okada or Mawa to drive, they were they set up about a hundred training centers, like the old Yaba Trade Trade Center across the country. Where people were gangster to three, four programs. And the potential Okada driver was now became a tiler, a roofer, and uh, a bricklayer, a so many things. You get what I mean, fitter. Those people we're working on this construction site right across the country. They got training that they could sell those skills for life and they were amongst the people because they had been empowered who were allocated those units on a monthly rent to buy over a 20-23 year period. So by doing that, it just work out how many people, in not just directly, but indirectly, one building site will employ. Doesn't that remind you of the LEDB? The LEDB in scheme. The 60s. Look, if you look at the social capital <laughs> that was built out of the LEDB scheme, the LEDB scheme was not for the high end, though. No, it, it wasn't. was for lower cadre public servants. Let, let me educate the, the yeah. younger ones. The <laughs> LEDB scheme is what you now yeah. know as Suruleri. Yeah. Uh, uh, mm. the Olumegwan, yeah. Shita, mm. all those. If you for the younger ones, you see that all the houses are. look the same. This, this, yeah. this was government, and they were they were, they were rent to own. They were rent. They were. Monthly, my grandmother had one. Yeah. You paid monthly. monthly you I mean, car. like if you look at um, the pay places of um, Ogunsoya, you know those. Yeah, yeah, know Ogunsoya, yes. They were rent to buy over two decades. Mm -hmm. They were. Minor public servants. There were people below level eight. Eight, yeah. But if you are going to buy those places now, you're talking about seventy million naira. Most of them are bank. They're bank. But even more they're banks are yeah. But even more important than that is that you actually build social capital. Mm. Social capital is actually more important than the economic capital because by having a look, the link between poverty and not being poor. Is the absence of title. Mm. If you have a clean title to an asset, doesn't have to be just house. Mm. 
it means that you have effectively exited the poverty chain. A person without a title remains stuck in despondency. You must start like they did in Brazil to ensure that you give hundreds of thousands of people the opportunity to at least have the prospect of eventually owning a tradable title. A Kakemawa is not a title or an, no. uh, or an Okada. <laughs> I mean, it, no, I mean, you can, if, if, in Brazil, for example, when, you know, if you look at the programs that they did, unlike what we're doing here, what we started here is a good start, that free school mid program. After he started in the Lugo, Lagos colony in the 1950s. Yes. Yeah. But we have to now link it up to agricultural production. Because, like in Brazil, when, because you have to supply about 35 million school children a glass of soya milk a day. It meant that you had to go for bust on the production of soya, soya milk. milk. Because of that, there was an explosion which led to having to meet soya milk demand from China of about $100 billion a year. Hmm. And that was one of the basis of the ground of impeachment against Diana Rousseff that they bungled the process. They could only supply about $64 billion. So that was a good start. But, and by that kind of school feed meaning prayer, which we started here, to be fair, but not on the kind of grand coordinated yeah, scale. Now, talking about talking about this now leads me yeah. to specifics here. Yeah. Some of these were the things that we were promised by the APC government. Yeah. I don't say a lot of the things they promise happening. In the area of corruption, they've been found wanting. Do you agree with that? Yeah, but I think okay, let me let me let me clarify my slight divergence of opinion. Yes. Just very quickly, since you have a limited amount of time. Is it first of all on this corruption thing? Yes. One thing I praise the government for before I tell you why it is is that at least they made it to make make it to look like corruption is unfashionable. You get what I mean? Okay. At least there is a toga now that is not a good thing, which I don't think was there the day before. But there's a problem. The good thing, if we look at the inadequacy of what has happened, there's one thing. <laughs> I really don't think that people felt that the judiciary in this country would be as uncooperative as they appear to be, as far as it, and then secondly, to be very fair to the Buhari administration, because I think you know some intellectual honesty is important here. Look at what has happened in Malaysia in the last three months. The amount of money recovered in under two months in Malaysia is more than Nigeria's foreign exchange reserves. That is because the new government of Matia Mohammed under three hours got the emergency powers that no national assembly in Nigeria under what we have today would have given forget about Buhari or Jonathan or Jimmy Disu or Atiku or Kwakwansu that they have recovered about 57 billion dollars in the space of almost under two and a half months it's because of emergency legislation that's that's uh, in, in Malaysia. Malaysia. Ah, okay, okay, look at what happened now. The, the the prime minister of Malaysia has powers which none of these people will ever give to any Nigerian president. There are three thousand people in Malaysia today who cannot leave the country. Is there any national assembly in Nigeria before we say the government has failed? Well, but but before you know I mean? before but yeah. for you to want to give the government that kind of powers, mm. you have to see that they've been fair. When issues of corruption concern mm. their own persons. There's a silence. There's always a silence around it. You must agree. You must agree with me that this so-called war against corruption, oh, you know, it appears. It appears. And I'm not saying this is one-sided, but it appears to be one to, to, to be one-sided because the low-hanging fruits that you could have used to to build up your credibility, you have not used it. It's very unfortunate, actually, that 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 has been unfortunately a distraction. For example, you know, and if you had just used a couple of uh, low hanging fruits to send a signal exactly all these things that the people actually supporting corruption bring up would have been avoided. the best example was very early on in the day hmm. when a government agency i'm not going to mention so it doesn't affect your 
advertising revenue. Since I don't pay the salaries. <laughs> of, <laughs> I don't pay the salaries. All right, let's go. Game. But honestly, it's really regrettable that in the first, I think, four months, a government agency made a totally irregular backdoor recruitment. Strategic agency on which the economy of any country relies. Mm. It was a God-given opportunity for the government to have state manage a reporter asking the president or somebody a question that ah, but this, this thing can't be true now it's fake news that this is, that would have been a very good example that you use somebody as that look, government doesn't know anything about this thing you know? it, it's not possible for such an important agency of government to have done backdoor recruitment this agency is too strategic we need technical capacity and skills the people to be recruited this year, they have got to be the best and the brightest of a generation if you had if some heads or a head had ruled then you would have made it clear, given an, an ambiguous uh, saying that the government is not going to tolerate this. That opportunity was lost. So many opportunities were lost. Of course, the people who have a lot to lose in a fight against corruption, they liked on it that this thing is selective, if one-sided. Uh, uh, one, uh, sorry, let me, give you, let me give you an example. The, yeah. the case of the secretary to the government. Yeah. It, was a cl- it was a clear case. Uh, it, it was a clear case that ordinarily any police sergeant would have would have sorted out. Yeah. Um, there was a contract of 200 and something. It was claimed that the secretary they brought in people to represent him and so on. And then the government kept pussyfooting, set up a, a, a panel to look at it. As we speak, the word out there is that, oh, they are still investigating. Yeah. You know? Or, or even in the case of the... You have to make some sacrifices. Mm. I think it was an urban center, but you have to make a, yes. You have just sent a signal. You can compensate to use the odious word. We yeah, use, uh, you can consent, uh, compensate the person later. That thing dragged on for too long. Maybe it was a misplaced sense of personal loyalty. But in your batois, no. At, uh, the, 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 the truth yeah. is, the truth is, the thinking that some people have, which I share, is that Buhari appears to be too slow on so many things, and. For all his worth, even on, in the case of the Fulani headsman, he was also too slow to react. I think there's a there's a there's a general feeling of uh, misplaced loyalty. There's a general feeling of tardiness, and I think there might be also a problem of the structure itself, because the case for a strong man has been discredited, even yeah. before Obama said it. Where well, you know, but. I think there's a there, there are institutional defects. For example, you know, one of these things which you have to build up is like in the case of a member of a government, right? If you had strong institutions, the institution can move independent of a government. Mm. The best example, of course, is when Tony Blair was prime minister. Junior police officers went to interview the prime minister under caution in 10 Downing Street about campaign finance. You get what I mean? Yeah. I can't see junior police officers going to interview the, cha- <laughs> the chairman of the local government. <laughs> I can't see. But that is because you have built up independent institutions. And you see, the tragedy of our times uh, is that we are not looking at the fact that you have to build up institutions. And yeah, even next year's presidential election, people are talking about an individual. You get what I mean? Whereas mm. Napoleon Bonaparte said, Men cannot determine the future. Institution, it is only institutions that can determine the future. A strong man has an expiry date, whether it's Nelson Mandela, who, you get what I mean? But we are not, you see, the thing is that, look, we're not building institutions to the extent where they can actually match in, Do you interview know and arrest a serving government official. Do you know what, why? Yeah, what? The politicians over time, even during the days of the military, yeah. had made sure that they decimated any form of development amongst the populace. Yeah. And that is why you find a, 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 you know, a lot of lack of deep thinking in the things that the average Nigerian would do or say. Everybody will be completely impoverished, you know, such, such that everybody is just on a race to get the little bit that he can. Yeah. And, and um, I mean, it's, you can't raise social consciousness in poverty. In poverty, it's broken yes. Broken down education. Broken down education. Like what I was telling you earlier on, if Fela was 21 years old today and started 
from Jeon Koku. You know? And that's your next part. <laughs> Would there be really be a demand for Fela's music today? I won't go betting the ranch on it because the, you you had to have a certain level of social consciousness to appreciate what Fela is saying. Have you ever tried to? The biggest demographic group in Nigeria today is under 35. Have you ever tried to motivate the people who can single-handed, the demographic group that can single-handedly install a president in February without a shot being fired? Have you tried to mobilize them to, to register? To be short. The under 35 should be registering in unprecedented num numbers because they have a future at stake. How much future do I have? <laughs> Looking at the body parts in front of it. <laughs> Honestly, no, try it. Eh? I think registration has closed now. But just no, just very quickly. Yes. To know how low the level of social consciousness is. Try and get somebody who has just finished youth court three weeks ago. Try and explain to him why it's worth his while to just waste a few hours or a few days to register. He doesn't get it. Sorry. So, don't don't you think we are gonna have a lot of apathy in twenty nineteen? The turnout is gonna be deplorable. It'll be very low. It'll no, be because very low. I mean then, then, because it doesn't look as if there'll be more to choose from anyway. Well, I mean, last time there was euphoria. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt whether mm -hmm. you like it or not. Oh yes, it's changed. Strong man is there coming. Was, there was euphoria and stuff, but look, look, first of all, I don't really think that because a good example which is not a reflection no, mm. on the people involved. But the best example you can give happened a few weeks ago. Turnout in the Kitty State was 21.3% of the population. Of, of registered uh, voters. Of registered, that is a pathetic figure. It's pathetic. In a government, even in the local government election. That's maybe less than 10% of the total no, I mean, population. That, that is ridiculous because you are, these, are, these are the INEC figures. Forget about who participated in an election or didn't participate. Mm -hmm. you give allowance to the fact that maybe some people died, relocated, you know, like... Yeah. You know, like but honestly, whatever the factors, even if he was raining cats and dogs on that day, I'm not sure where he was raining cats and dogs, I don't know. But honestly, no matter how pathetic, 21.3% of, registered, of voters. registered voters has turned out in an election is a terrible thing. Don't forget that most of the registered voters though do so to fulfill all rights all righteousness in case they need the document. Oh yeah, I mean that's always been there since Jack on this time. Personally, you get what I mean. Mm. I think that in in this situation, I've always believed like like in Australia, Brazil or the Seychelles, that voting should be compulsory, just like taxation is compulsory. Because one of the things that led to compulsory voting in Brazil <coughs> was to curb vote buying. Hmm. You get what I mean? You see, it, it, it's, you get fined the equivalent of the minimum wage, which is at the 18,000 in Nigeria. And you won't know that because you're a high roller. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what he spends on the week. <laughs> I'm sorry to insult you. I'm, 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 not with small I, I'm, sure, I'm sure you meant it to 1,000, not 18. <laughs> <laughs> so, you can't afford, you can't afford, the average person can't afford to pay uh, 18,000 for non voting. So, you just go and there and you, you vote, even if you don't, you know. You yeah. Don't, because they now found out that if everybody, if it's compulsory to vote, right, it, it makes the quantum that is required for vote buying. Ludicrously, Ludicrously high. high, yes. You know, so I've always supported going that Australia, Brazil, Seychelles way and making it compulsory to vote because you know, in the society now, if you be part of the social contract, you pay your tax, the, the government gives you something back, you know, and you should vote now. How can you just sit in your house and be complaining about Nepal and the. Are you voting next year? Be honest. I've always voted, say, I don't think I'll be voting, to be honest. I'll be voting in my state uh, election. Obviously. Year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I will be I, it, it will take a uh, I'll be voting my state election yeah but I do, I'm not sure obviously 
I think we have to take a break. I'm sorry. I'm let, let me, let me, <laughs> we, we, we are going to take a short break. <laughs> when we come back, I'll read, <laughs> I'll read some of the reactions that we have here and uh, then we'll take some of your calls. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Antonia, I beg go follow me, make reach the other street. What did they put for dear? I won't go pepper them with this my new hairstyle and hot jeans. Hey, hey, oh um, I go pepper them. Pepper fire. Oh, you are missing. They use Instagram on top empty and goodie bag. You they hear the fun fine girl for street. Eh, so how this empty and goodie bag come for my career now? <laughs> hey, just download Instagram for your phone first. Then come down star 131 hash to get empty and goodie bag for only 25 naira. Then come take a picture of your new hairstyle and hot jeans. You go come post them for Instagram. Ah, ah, you don't snap selfie. Ah, you didn't say me I go carry last. No. Oh yeah, show them your fashion style. With only 25 naira daily, you go get double of your data to browse your Instagram. No carry lasso, enter empty and goodie bag now. Just dial star 131 star 3 hash. Make yourself come to get double double. <laughs> Guy, now what for you? Where your MTN sim day? MTN sim? Ah, you place your drop on one side. I don't call you since last week now. You don't miss many, many things, so. Business day, I say, I call you. Your phone say, not available. I call say, I go arrange another hustle. Your phone still say, not available. I call say, I tell you, say, MTN, not they dash some people 20 times any amount where they recharge. Wait, wait, wait. MTN, they dash I say, MTN, they dash 20 times any amount where you take recharge. Now, you say, if you load 100 naira, now 2,000 naira be that straight. Oh, so you mean, say, if I load 200 naira, now 4,000 naira be that straight. I don't jump by the slip sim. They said they rock a metal now. Guy, I did go find my MTN sim shop star. Yes, so if you never use your MTN sim for the past 45 days or more, time don't reach to come back and begin enjoy plenty, plenty a woof as MTN go dash you 20 times your first recharge of every month. Oh, yo, everybody don't go reactivate your MTN sim. You still the work. If you know if you find your sim, sharply go any MTN office to do sim swap and enjoy your own a woof. Terms and conditions they shall. My sister, all that glitters and shine shine you. Now, so I see one fine bobo like that. Fresh boy, designer this, designer that. But my boy still a carry palasa for we no get internet, WhatsApp, or even Facebook. Eh? I mean, one take relate now. My people, make Palasa phone no fall your hand this year. Upgrade to smartphone. In fact, buy any smartphone or bring your smartphone come MTN and then go summer you with 100% awu data bam on top every bundle where you buy for the next three months. So make you drop that Palasa now so you feel they enjoy fast, fast internet on the network with data boku and then be bumper for data coverage. This awu now for new and old MTN customers. You're listening to The Discourse with Jimmy Dusu, brought to you by MTN. Yeah, you're welcome back to The Discourse with Jimmy Dusu, brought to you by MTN. And I still have with me the Prince of the Source, <laughs> Prince of Ife, Komiade Milui. And we're just having a ball, really. Just <laughs> <laughs> you know, know I, I, keep, I, keep, I keep telling people that the discourse is not an interview program. That's why it's called discourse, you know. It's for us to sit and exchange ideas. And I hope you're enjoying what we're having. Um, I have a WhatsApp. Please, when you send... Oh, he put his name. Obiola from Festac Town says that, uh, good afternoon. Festac Town was a pilot housing scheme intended to be replicated across the country under General Gawan. The idea was thrown away. Shelter is central to basic human needs. Obiara, I'll even tell you something you probably don't know. The whole idea was to build a, to That's replicate true. First Town all the way to Gawan Estate in Ipaja. Mm-hmm. And you know you know the, the first stack uh, first stack two was I don't know whether it was rent to buy, but you paid monthly. No, it was it was a rent to buy scheme. Was and it rent get, to buy or you just paid monthly? It's the same thing. It was the same thing, yes. It's the yes, same thing. Yes. yes. Monthly uh, uh mm-hmm. um to the guests in the studio, this is a, a big person from Ikoi. He says in the studio with the political confusion, power tussles, dramatic lies displayed across parties. Who is that competent and dependable politician of our day that we can look up to? Is there anyone? There's, uh, well, I mean, that's a difficult question because the competent and what did you call it? He says the competent. <coughs> the man must have a platform. Okay. That's why I said the problem is to answer the Odubes or. Yes. 
if you have Twiddle D and Twiddle Dom, <laughs> like uh, Ari <laughs> like, as we have now, the way to break the logjam, obviously, is to form a third party like Macron or the guy in Mexico who was elected about six weeks ago, four weeks ago, did. Unfortunately, it's late in the day, though. Hmm? It's late in the day because, you see, if you're going to form a third party, it starts with voter registration. Hmm. If you have started a year or two years ago to show the key demographic group why they should be registered to break the logjam. Hmm. So, if you are saying that... Look, no Macron or this Labrador guy, the guy was elected in... But you have to remember that in Mexico, somebody formed the third party who is now the president-elect against not APC and PDP. He formed the third party against the PRI and the NSC, parties that are over 90 years old. Mm. These parties are older than Action Group and NCNC. You get what I mean? Mm -hmm. And he formed an independent movement and took 53% of the vote. But that was thing that was started about a year and a half before. You get what I mean? Yeah. There's nobody on the horizon because nobody has felt that it should create a platform. They need to create a platform. If you look at the way that some of these so-called, in inverted commas, in the, I don't want to mention your friend's name, your publisher, not publisher of this, the kind of statements <laughs> that this guy has been making, and actually discredited the whole uh, youth candidate uh, argument. Okay. When somebody comes and says that he can unilaterally abolish the Senate. Much as I support the unicameral uh, framework. Framework. You can't just abolish the... There's a process to abolish the Senate. You yes, can't come and just give that the president by executive orders can abolish the Senate. So to go back to the very important question... He, uh, he actually shows a lack of experience. Um, no, no, it's not a lack of experience. What is it's it a lack is? of seriousness. Ah. No, I, mean, I mean, come on. Now. This guy is older than Macron now. Hmm. The person I'm talking about is older than Macron. He's about six years older than Macron. When Macron, if you look at, if you Google the English translation of the program of uh, France on Mars, the political platform, that one in just one year, it was a serious. <coughs> sorry. No, no, it was no, a sorry. serious program. Mm -hmm. Macron wasn't coming about talking club trap about abolishing Senate or this that of a minimum wage of a hundred thousand naira a month in one fell swoop. It was a detailed, well worked out program. The guy was only thirty eight years old when they started that uh, on March this day. This guy you're talking about is six, seven years, eight years older than well, Macron. Man. He has not shown the the same seriousness, the same preparation. It's like the guy's on a lark. It's like no different. Look, I've seen older as you and I am. Sorry to, I, I'm letting your your viewers know that. This no, man, no, I don't mind no, the grandfather. They know they come tell you say Jimmy this to Jimmy this. I'm going to worry about you. you. <laughs> Look, <laughs> when, I, when I was at university, uh, honestly, and the same. For you, because we're at the university at the same time. Honestly, people running for student union elections, they run on more serious manifestos. I'm going to talk about you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is, you know, yeah. student, you know there, was a, mm. there was a delusion there that the student union was bigger than me. Yes. You know, at the university at that time, you wanted to change the world. That's if you didn't want to blow up, blow up the, world. the world. Yes. <laughs> but, you can say that again. Uh, but jokes apart, right? The people running in a student union election in when you and I were university, right? They took what they were doing much more perhaps a bit too seriously than what this man who was to be president of Nigeria. I mean, look, this is it, getting is offensive. Is it past to this? I know. I mean, this, this, <laughs> yeah, but what I'm saying is that <laughs> I know. No, I, the, this thing is getting a bit offensive, actually, that you are turning the presidency of a country into some kind of lack. It's become like a picnic joke, you know, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. And that's why he is bothered. Mr. I think it was Odubeso or Gumbeso. Yes. February is here. If you are going to, to me, you have a one-party state with factions and tendencies. If indeed, and much more important than that, which I think is what <laughs> he's bothered about, whether you like it or not, the decade 2020 to 2030 
it's not decisive for Nigeria. It's make or break. Hmm. Because if you don't have growth, economic growth rates in real terms of roughly seven to eight percent, which is going to be difficult in the best under the best government between 2020 and 2030. I think you and I better start looking for some cribs in a Porto Novo. <laughs> oh, are, I'm sorry, you are in high rollers. So <laughs> you're in looking for a crib in the Amsterdam. Where do you think you'll be 2030? <laughs> I won't place a bet on it. You'll be six feet down. <laughs> <laughs> I won't place a bet on it. <laughs> so <laughs> you're entering into a decisive decade. Right? Yes. There's no political formation in this country with a program that says this is make or break. Look, in 2030, Yes. You cannot have up to 10 million Nigerians directly involved in agricultural production. That's suicidal. We look at the Netherlands. The 200,000 farmers organized in cooperatives last year, according to the figures of the economy, exported $110 billion worth of agro-industrial goods. The Netherlands is one-third the size of Niger State with a population, well forget about the population which is less than, but with just 200,000 farmers you get what I mean today you have a situation where the, the farming framework is employing more people who are involved in artificial intelligence mathematicians using algorithms like Facebook to use in agricultural production that you know all that kind of you are talking about agriculture in Nigeria as if it's some kind of cutlass. Uh, <laughs> Look, if, you cannot embed it with Nigeria's population growth rate, right? If you have more than 10 million people directly involved, I'm not saying indirectly, directly involved in agricultural production in 2030, mm. that is a, a cataclysm now because that means that you are running a completely unproductive process. You don't have any manifesto that I have seen. I mean, maybe you obviously read wider than I. Nah. That is actually looking at this is a make or break decade, 20, 2020 to 2030. This is the population projection. This is the way to curtail by having free run. There's no detail proposal. And what he's worried about is that there is no clear cut person. It's not the person that matters, it's the platform on oh, which it's running. Oh, oh, okay, now nah, nah, because we're running out of time. Ah, okay, I'm sorry. Now nah, nah, it's okay. What kind of scenario do you think we'll have in February? Well, if scenario is simple, how, how do you think it will work out? There is no third party. It's too late to have a third party now. Mm. Re voters' registration has closed. The kind of platforms, and it's unfortunate because you have social media, which is relatively free. No, there's no third party. Forget about that. Okay, so what you're going to have is a, an election, in my opinion, of a vote, a referendum on the present government. Hmm. Or a choice between Twiddle D and Twiddle Dom. Who do you think the Twiddle Dom would be from the other side? The APC one is, is, is a done deal. No, no, I the mean, president the president is going. And he's a, so, who do you think who do you think he'll be facing in the ring? It's really difficult to tell because you don't know what kind of primary. I mean, obviously, I don't think they're going to have direct primaries of one person, one vote. One vote, yeah. But you mean, the point of the matter is that whoever is chosen from. Who do you think that whoever would be? But what difference between would... between what appears yeah. to be for now? We know Atiku yeah. is interested. Mm. You see, what we I... are not sure whether mm. Saraki is mm. interested or not. Yeah. What? Who do you think? Kwakwanso mm. is also on the card. What, you see, this, what do you think will happen? Yeah. You have to look at the person to be chosen will have to represent a coalition of interests mm. from different geopolitical zones. And probably they might look at how much cash he's bringing on the table. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of thing. But honestly, to me, whoever is chosen, what difference does it make? Yeah. It, because what I, you know, if you look at all the people that you're talking about, whether it's Atiku, Kwanso, yeah. whatever, sorry. What is the difference in the program, the platform that that person is going to be running on in 2019 addressing the fundamental issues 
that the country is going to face, like I said, I'm not talking about somebody running an election, running to be president between 2019 and 2023. I'm talking about what is the platform in which you enter a make or break decade. So whether whichever one of these people is chosen, in all seriousness, what difference? So does it what, make? what 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 do we then do as individuals to brace ourselves? Because it doesn't doesn't look too good coming. Well, obviously, I have I have a sinking feeling it doesn't look too good. Well, it's obviously not looking too good unless you are a very good eternal optimist. You get what I mean? Yeah. And um, it's difficult to say because there's really no choice now. I think I have my own personal prayer. Apart from the mass apathy, is that um, maybe we just uh, limp along. Hmm. No, but, and then hope that uh, by 2023 there will be a clear cut alternative. You so it's still what? a long way from salvation. Hello, we have a caller. Hello, oh, we lost it. Uh, so it's still a long way from salvation. It's unfortunate because if you're going to talk about a clear cut alternative position, hmm. this is something that you have started two years ago or a year ago. Instead, people trivialize it into um, not too young to run or youthful. Macron and the, the guy who won in Mexico, they didn't win because of all Justin Trudeau, mm. who was two years old when Gowan was president or mm. was head of state. These guys did not win because of their age. They won on the basis of a platform. They sold the manifesto which you may not agree with. Really? You get, okay, who is actually selling a manifesto today that has caught the, the public imagination? Name one person amongst the young to run campaign that's what should disappoint you most mm. what should disappoint you most is how much of the key demographic the people with the future or like me how many of the under 35s have been registered in the last six months we, we have a caller i'm oh, sorry hello oh we lost that caller but come you keep yeah. thinking that you might be gone the thing is <laughs> I, didn't say, I, didn't I read. I read in the I history books. I don't books. have that much at stake. <laughs> but, uh, but I read in the history books in eighteen. I think it was eighteen twelve. Yeah. There was one at Demi Louis that lived for two hundred and fifty years. <laughs> so you could see. I hope that's history and not fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> so it seems to be more like seems to be more like fantasy than this thing. No, but you see the thing is. <laughs> no, you see the thing is. The, the, the level of social consciousness is terrifying. Oh, okay, we got uh, one caller. Hello? Hello? Yes, good afternoon. Very quickly, because we're running out. Uh, uh, good evening. Uh, good afternoon. Afternoon, sir. Uh, afternoon. Uh, I just want to ask a question from the man uh, in the studio. Yes. How do you think Nigerians can really get their hearts together by sanitizing or enlightening the people that are supposed to be voting? in order for us to just break loose from all these things we are talking about. How do we sanitize or enlighten Nigerians about this whole process in getting involved? Okay, so we have just yeah. one minute. Very Thank quickly, you, you know, that was what I was telling Jimmy, that this, a, a society is changed not by personal... A society is changed not by personality, but a vanguard. Mm. It is a vanguard that has always changed right, from the, uh, the time Adam and Eve left the, what we ought to have been done was for a group of people to have come together, put together a clear alternative manifesto and platform and mobilize people on that basis. That should have been started a year ago. Mobilize people that this is the platform that can break through and attack the question of poverty, of the question of the structural defects of the country, the question of low economic growth, lack of jobs. This thing should have been done a year ago and interwoven with that you can only make the change by getting registered to vote, by donating your own two, three hundred naira. It's not rocket science. It's what uh, Macron did in France. It's what this new guy in Mexico did. To me, uh, if you are thinking about February, you have to start thinking of 2023 now. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. So, no, I can't Sorry take it to again. We, we have to, we have to be, I mean, <laughs> this is, that's the truth. I think, I think, um, like you said, we might, do, but one thing that I know, um, and I won't ask you a comment on this. One, th one thing that I know is that if uh, who is between Lady and Trudy, anyway, if Buhari if Buhari has a second term, is we're going to lose a large part of our uh, elite population because everybody is going to be running for. 
There'll be, one, there'll be one with tickets flying all over town. It'll be good for the crooks to be in jail. <laughs> uh, Kwame, thank you very much for you know for, for being here. I didn't know um, we spent our time. Yeah, we spent the time. One eye is gone. Time is I'm this sure, program's sure. greatest enemy. So that's where we'll leave it for now. Um, we'll continue next week. If I will continue on Tuesday, actually. Uh, on, t- on Tuesday, I think I have Tommy Davis and uh, some other people. You know Tommy Davis, don't you? Let me see a little. I haven't seen I Tommy, little Tommy, Tommy yeah. Day. Coming on Tuesday. On Tuesday yeah. uh, so, <laughs> so that's 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 what we'll be doing the whole of this week, actually. Bringing in people. Let's take a second look and see what we can do in this last hour. Because, to be honest with you, I don't have faith in what I'm seeing. Don't have any faith. But that's, that's that for that. So, remember that Mon- uh, Mondays to Fridays, there's front page news at 7 o'clock. Yeah. And Tuesdays to Fridays... There's a, a Morning Digest on our sister station, Lagos Talks, 91.3. And the whole of next week, most likely, we'll be talking about things like this. That's where we leave it. Lawrence, thank you very much for being here. Uh, if there's a part of the program you didn't quite get well, by, say, let me say, because the internet is a bit slow now, by Tuesday or so, it should be on my blog, jimmydisu.com, so you can get to listen to it again. So that's where we leave it for today. Once again, Lawrence, thank you very much, Kwame. Thanks. Thanks a million. Let, let's go have one of them. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks a million. We'll see you next week. Cheers. And that's it on the discourse with Jimmy Disu, brought to you by MTN. Every now and then, you hear a classic that you just cannot resist. Music for your mind, body, and soul. Playing music from your lifetime. To the sounds of Classic FM 97.3. This is the home of music.